Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to recover data from a hardware RAID 50 based on an HP P410 controller. You will see how to build this array type, how to replace a faulty hard disk and what to do if the controller stops working. Hello friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. It is well known that RAID 5 is a quite reliable disk array type, but its performance leaves much to be desired. By strapping data across a united body of several array groups, you get RAID 50, which gives you a significant performance boost and increased disk space efficiency if compared with a conventional RAID 5 system. It takes RAID 50 closer to RAID 10 performance-wise, but its fault tolerance is going to be a bit lower. This RAID type can survive only one faulted disk in every subarray. Within a few minutes, we'll explore how to build the RAID 50 system, how to replace a faulty disk, what to do if you accidentally removed some information or formatted a disk, and how to fix a problem with a failing disk or controller that was used to build such a disk array. To build the RAID 50 system, you need at least six disks. The HP P410 controller lets you build a disk array with the help of BIOS options and a special utility. To access the controller's BIOS while booting, hit the F8 button after initialization. If the hard disks are empty and they haven't been part of other disk arrays, open the option Create Logical Drive. If these disks have been used before to build the RAID system, that system should be removed because the controller may have issues with displaying them. To do it, go down to find the option Delete Logical Drive and press Enter to open the option. Use the up and down arrow keys to navigate the list of disks and select the ones you don't need. Then remove them by pressing F8 and hit F3 to confirm your decision. When you're finished with the array configuration and it is saved, press Enter. Now you can start building a RAID 50 array. Jump to Create Logical Drive. Use the space key to select all disks that you would like to include into the array. Press the Tab key to access the next part of the configuration process. Check the required RAID type and select how many groups you want in your array. In my case, there will be two groups as I have only six hard disks. When all settings are ready, press Enter and you'll see all the information about the array, its size and type. To confirm this configuration, press F8 and hit Enter to proceed. Open the option View Logical Drive to have the array information displayed. If everything is correct, Press Escape to leave the settings menu and continue with booting. After that, you'll have to open Disk Management and format the disk array by assigning a drive letter and choosing the desired file system. To build an array from the operating system which has booted and is already running, Use the proprietary utility for managing disk arrays – HP Array Configuration Utility or HPE Smart Storage Administrator, which can be downloaded from the official website. In the Configuration tab, select your controller and click Create Array on the right side of the window. Select the disk that your future RAID is going to include and click OK. After that, Click on Create Logical Drive, select the array type, the number of groups, block size, set a specific disk size if necessary. Enable caching and finally click Save to confirm. Now that the array is built, the last step is to format it with the disk management utility.
To replace a faulty disk, just take it out and insert a healthy disk instead. And the rebuild process should start automatically. To find out which disk is out of order, use the utility to open the storage device tab and check the list of disks by their serial numbers to see which one is missing. If you have an extra slot for another disk, you can insert the new disk there and set it as a spare one. The controller will automatically find the faulty disk and start the rebuild process with the new disk you added. A disk can be set as spare in BIOS in the section Create Logical Drive. Select this option here. The rebuild process can be monitored in the utility we have mentioned before – HPE Smart Storage Administrator. When the controller fails, you won't be able to access the data on the disks without replacing it. If your attempt at replacing was not successful, use a specialized RAID data recovery tool – Hetman RAID Recovery. It can read all the information about the controller used to create the disk array and will rebuild the damaged RAID system. Connect the disks directly to the motherboard and launch the program. By the way, before you start the recovery process, make sure you have a disk with the same or larger capacity than the amount of data you are going to recover. While connecting hard disks, you may discover that you don't have enough setup ports and power connectors. This problem can be fixed with a variety of expansion cords and power adapters, and we are showing some of them on the screen right now. As you can see, the program has built the RAID system without effort and now displays all the information about the array. Right-click on it and start fast scan. Select the files you want to recover, click Recovery, select where you want to save them, and click Recover again. When the entire process is over, you will find the recovered files in the folder you have chosen. If fast scan doesn't help the program to find a lot of data, then go for full analysis. Even if the program failed to recognize and rebuild your disk array automatically, you can still use the RAID constructor, but it requires you to know all the information about this specific disk array. Select Manual mode and click Next. And then select the RAID type, the block size and order, the number of disks in the group, select the disks in the, in the array and specify their order. Add empty disks instead of any disks that are shown as missing. When all the properties are given, click Add. The RAID system will appear in the Drive Manager. Now the final step is to scan it and recover your data. This array type remains operable if one disk within a group fails, that is, if two disks are out of order, one disk in either group, the whole array is still able to work. Our program can recover data even if two disks are missing. But if they were disks from the same group, some of the files will be damaged. Loss of data often occurs when hard disks are swapped over or placed into the storage systems uh, in an attempt to rebuild the disk array. Be careful, pay attention to what you're doing, and don't agree to initialize and format the disks when the other operating system suggests it. Formatting the boot disk or boot partition may damage or remove the striping, which reduces your chances for data recovery and may cause a permanent data loss. Before taking any action, make sure you have backed up your disks. 
Always remember to back up important information regularly to prevent data loss. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Push the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck.